So, as the plan and bad governor's protest, which is to commence on August 1st, draws closer, Sarah reporters have exposed Tinibu's government plans to use hoodlums and courtes to hijack the peaceful protest and also exposed Tinibu's government of paying influencers to cause disruption amongst protesters. All right, I'm going to be giving you guys the full details of this news, but please help us to like and share this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you. So, some hoodlums and court members have been allegedly mobilized by agents of Tinibu's government to disrupt the August 1st to 10th and bad governors in Nigeria protest, which is expected to be significant in Lagos and other key states. So, Sarah reporters learned on Saturday from top sources that the courtes and hoodlums hired to scuttle the planned protest had also been lodged in several hotels and we are awaiting further instructions. In an audio alert obtained by Sarah reporters, it was gathered that the courtes had been given marching orders by elements in the Lagos state government to attack the peaceful protest and turn it into a violent scene to enable the police and other security agencies move in. The development comes even as the government had said it would deploy thousands of police officers to different states of the federation to quell the protest. Meanwhile, Tinibu government allegedly begins massive campaign to discredit Showaway away and take it back movement over and bad governance revolt pays bloggers 750,000 naira per post. So, President Bola Tinibu government is attempting to discredit Showaway, a human rights activist and former presidential candidate and the Take It Back movement. This, according to Sarah reporters who have discovered that the government has reached out to bloggers offering them 750,000 naira per post to publish damaging content about Showaway and the Take It Back movement. A receipt obtained by Sarah reporters on Saturday confirmed one such payment, exposing the government plot to undermine the protest. So, the government plot against the end bad governor's protest has been confirmed not only by Sarah reporters. All right, I will let you guys watch this video and I'll be right back. Protest continues. You cannot pull out of a protest that you did not organize, that you were not invited to join. Right. And uh, these are just hungry people who are being paid by the government to come on air and embarrass themselves and their families, you know. So nobody's... Nigerians, what makes you think they are being paid by, by government? Of course, out? the government is sharing billions. I've been sharing billions in the last three weeks to different groups, religious people and all kinds of people, trying to get people to, to frustrate their protests. But you are, going to be, you are going to see what's going to happen all over the country on the 1st of August. The government is going to learn a bitter lesson about taking the people of Nigeria for granted. Now that exactly is what the government is concerned about and those who are dissociating themselves from this protest. When you say the government will see what will happen on the 1st of, of August, what exactly will happen? Yeah. I mean, Nigerians are expecting a peaceful It's going to be know, extremely, protests. it's going to be extremely peaceful. Right. Extremely. You know, Nigerians are going to express themselves in line with section 40 of the constitution that Nigerians have the right to assemble, to gather, and to express their grievances at government at all levels. You know, and this is an inalienable right of every citizen of this country. The government cannot tell people when to protest or how to protest or how to complain about maladministration of the government, especially considering the fact that this president today was a perpetual protester. He's a man that has funded protests against government. He has mm -hmm. always been in the opposition funding protests against government, yeah. you know, and and basically, because he has been doing it, I don't know how someone who has been funding protests no longer wants protests when he's now in the saddle of leadership. And because Kama is the universal donor, you know, it must go round because you funded protests against the Jonathan government in 2012 when over subsidy removal. Today you have removed subsidy. And today you do not want Nigerians to protest. And they are calling, they've been calling groups for the past three weeks to the villa, to all kinds of places, to ministries, to give them money, to go and be organizing town hall meetings Has and all these things. Has your group been invited? Severally, we have. Severally. They, right. We have declined. We, we speak, we have spoken to some people in government and we have to, told them, we said, if you want pro this protest not to hold, remove first subsidy. 
Yeah. Okay. Bring back fresh subsidy. If you want this process not to hold, do ABC things that will improve the life of people, not collect money, collect dollar from people in government, and you go on television and start embarrassing yourself. It's not only politicians that are self-centered and self-serving. We religious leaders too. We have our own share of the blame. The traditional rulers, and then those in active governance. You know, we have a problem, and I think it's a matter of. Uh, serious introspection. We need to look into our hearts and critically examine who are we and what do we do? What are our motives? Why are we in the places we are? What can we do better? And things like that. But this lack of critical self-analysis is what generates the corruption. People just contest for positions aggressively campaigning and generating all kinds of negative uh, issues and all to get to a position where they have access to the national patrimony. They have ac access to wealth uncontrolled. They can use it anyhow and so on. They don't care about the common good. They don't care about the children in, growing up. They don't care about the youth in their millions on the streets who should be well looked after. There is no social insurance scheme. If you are sick, you are on your own. If there's somebody who is mental on the street, she is on her own. There is a young person who, you know, has issues, nowhere to go. So I think we need to talk about ethical values, uh, this uh, patriotic spirit that we must all cultivate, which I'm afraid people get into politics and this is absent. And uh, we, we need to grow. So how is the church helping with that, building ethical values? And what's the role of religious organizations um, on, on, on that matter? We do our best. We are religious leaders. I am concerned about things of the spirit. I'm concerned about the soul and values that would enhance a better society and so on. We do the talking. We do the preaching. We don't fail in this. But I'm afraid the listening is a problem. And you wonder whether all these people who are in positions of authority listen at all. They are either Muslims or Christians, largely in this nation. And the amount of preaching that goes on, go around and you see the churches in their thousands, go around, you see mosques everywhere. Every morning there, is, there are bells ringing, then there is loud calling to prayer. Is it all hypocrisy or what? Is it really genuine? Why does this not translate to effective leadership, good governance, good conduct, honest and very good behavior? Why is it always we separate religion from uh, social issues? When people are in church, they are hungry, they have no jobs, they have nobody to listen to them, they have no access to leaders they have elected. You cannot have a a composed congregation. They might be physically present. They enjoy the music, the dance and all that. The dancing sometimes is to get rid of the, you know, uh, the depression that they are undergoing. So they are there, but they are not present. You must eat well. You must have a proper job. When you come to church, you know you go back, you have your lunch, you know you have a job to go to and all that. But these are missing. And you want us to pump moral values into them. You want the religious leaders to work miracles and compulsorily force them to obey the commandments of God. Somebody who is hungry is going to steal. Somebody who has no job is going to be, do criminal activities. So this is not peculi peculiar to Nigerians or, is, or Africans? It's, it's, yes. it's, it's, a human, it's human nature. When you are denied basic things of survival, you turn to crime. Criminality will flourish. So do what is right. Give everybody his or her due. That is the definition of justice. Give them their due. And then you see order. The youth will listen to you when you talk. But now you see the views are all up and do, they are just ready to fight because they are angry and hungry. So uh, we must not just blame them all the time. Let us blame uh, the leadership, let's blame the lack of doing the right thing that should guarantee peace 
and orderliness in the society. So my people, that is it for you all. I saw this news and I decided to share it with you guys. So please let me know your opinion in the comment section and please help us to like and share this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you so much for your time and God bless you. Amen.